The big ambition when doing exercise with type 1 diabetes is to keep your glucose levels as normal as possible. That's down to measuring, record keeping, hydration. All of which can be helped by some understanding of what's going on under the bonnet. And despite the challenges, everyone we meet says it's worth it. Encourage your children to um, go out and do running and do sport because actually a healthy, active lifestyle alongside diabetes really helps to control blood sugars as well. It makes you more sensitive to the insulin so that um, you don't have as many high blood sugars and it's easier to control. When I was diagnosed, I was 19 and for two or three years I just knocked sport on the head. Um, yeah, I'm making up for that time now. Anything could be managed, so as long as you've planned for it, you're sensible, you can do anything you want. We've met a group of people living with type 1 diabetes who do sport at a really high level. I would describe myself in terms of athletics as an international level athlete, club athlete, somebody who enjoys it, um, trains six days a week, so is pretty committed to it. I just love being out in the ocean. I don't wear a wetsuit. <laughs> uh, everyone thinks I'm crazy, but I kind of like that. <laughs> I try and aim to go out three times a week, uh, around 80 miles uh, in a week. Understanding what's happening inside your body when you exercise like this can be helpful. I think that understanding the science is probably the most powerful tool that I have in managing my diabetes. My level at the beginning of a session will probably be about seven an hour in. You'll notice that it'll start to go lower than four, maybe three to four. When you exercise, your injected insulin allows your body to burn blood glucose as fuel. You may need less of it when you're actually exercising, but the requirements change before, during and after, and can be affected by the weather and stress. Many people manage this challenge incredibly well, and as a bonus, find that it makes controlling their diabetes easier. In preparation for a half marathon, I'll actually reduce my background insulin uh, and in fact I can do it for you now because we're about an hour before this half marathon starts. When I drop my insulin levels at the start of the morning I'll notice that my blood sugar levels will obviously be going up because I'm having less insulin and then as I leave to cycle my blood sugar levels will begin to drop and that's why I've knocked back the amount of insulin I'm, I've been taking. To counteract this every hour I would have some pancakes or a carbohydrate gel just to raise my blood sugar levels a bit and with doing exercise this will knock my blood sugar levels back down so then it will result in a steady blood sugar level meaning I don't really have to have much insulin at all. At first it shocked me but um, something's happening in the body that will move the glucose to my cells more effectively. Enter GLUT4, a protein that occurs in muscle and liver cells which becomes more active around exercise. If insulin unlocks the door to the cells, then GLUT4 carries the glucose over the threshold. When you're exercising, the contraction of your muscles will cause GLUT4 transporters to deliver glucose to your cells. The advantage for us with diabetes is that it makes us more sensitive to insulin whilst we're exercising. That means we need less insulin, and so you can then manage your insulin and your diabetes much more effectively. My blood glucose comes down while I'm swimming and I know that so I almost don't take any insulin at all. I still take on carbohydrate but that it will still balance out so I actually took my pump off altogether because I just didn't want any insulin going in for a certain amount of time and then I put it back on half an hour later having tested my blood glucose again. You can get a waterproof pump and ideally you'd suspend your pump rather than take it off but the question is how do you work out what's right for you? 
couple of glucose checks are really your best friend in terms of management because how can you expect to know what's going on with your diabetes without doing checks? And you do need to know for optimum performance whether you're going for a walk around the park or whether you're going to, you know, the Olympics. We would just test every 10 minutes. When you start cycling or whatever sport you're doing, you have to do it more thoroughly. But as you get more confident, you can spread out the time because you know what your levels will be doing. Because it will be similar every time you go out. After sustained exercise, you're in a heightened state of sensitivity, meaning your body is able to use carbohydrate as fuel without your usual amounts of insulin. So you may need to reduce it and after exercise, your body will also be tucking away any freely available energy supplies or blood glucose to restock the stores in your liver and muscles. The danger with that for us is that in the post-exercise period, your blood glucose level can go very, very low because your body will recover freely available glucose from the circulating blood and that can leave you at risk of a hypo. So just be very conservative with the amount of insulin that you give after exercise. You're better off to give multiple small doses of insulin than one big dose. But once you've given the insulin, you can't take it back. As your body's more efficient at using insulin after exercise, you're at a risk of hypo, especially in the eight to 12 hours post aerobic exercise window. In some people, it could take as long as 24 hours and different types of exercise have a, a different recovery period. Once you've got that record of what your levels are doing, it's so much easier. You can just look at it, see where your blood sugar levels are dropping or your blood sugar levels are rising and then make the insulin changes accordingly. I tend to have my meal after I finish training just because I want to make sure that I'm not in any kind of danger of having hypos overnight because the effects of exercise can last longer than the activity itself. Talk to your diabetes team about strategies to minimise the risk of an overnight hypo after exercise. It will usually involve reducing your background insulin by around 20%, as well as doses with food, but varies from person to person. Some people find that an insulin pump can make the process easier. I was using insulin injection pens for many years, and I've recently gone on an insulin pump. A pump is so much more help when you're doing sport. I would never be able to do what I'm doing now on injections. The pump's been a miracle because you can do those minute changes which really help in the, in the long run. It's just great. And talk to your dietitian if you're thinking about carb loading for endurance events. That's building up stores of glycogen or fuel in your muscles and liver. Carb loading has a cumulative effect. It's not just having the pasta party the night before, as many marathon runners think. In advance of my 8K swim, I took on enough carbohydrates the day before to be ready for a sort of slow release of energy. In my opinion, carb loading is extremely important, and it also increases the speed at which you recover from exercise. However, take advice first. There is some evidence that it can damage your long-term glucose control, as measured by your HbA1c. So do discuss it with your diabetes team. Don't forget about variables like the weather. Heat opens up blood vessels, increasing the absorption rate of insulin, while cold does the opposite. If it's a particularly warm day, I know that my, um, the uptake of my insulin is a lot quicker. Dehydration can raise blood glucose levels and cause temporary resistance to insulin. If I'm well hydrated, I don't see so many highs. And perhaps an interesting way of looking at the effect of exercise is to see what happens when you stop, as Mel found out when she injured her Achilles tendon. What I found is that my background insulin, which is the equivalent to basal insulin on injections, I've had to increase by nearly 30%. And I found that previously, when I was training, my carb to insulin ratio was for every 10 grams of carbohydrate I would eat, I need one unit of insulin. Whereas now, I need one unit of insulin for every eight grams. There's always more to say than we can squeeze into a short film. But there's good information online about specific types of exercise. Do explore these links to find out more. And we'll give Mandy, one of the runners at the Swansea Half, the last word.
please don't hesitate. Make sure you're exercising at any level. There's nothing that can stop you with type 1.